Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a video on my thoughts on Torchwood, Children of Earth. Um, it's the 11th of August 2023 of this recording. I, yeah, just watched episode 4 and 5 today, earlier today. Um, or day four and five, which I think is quite interesting, because if you didn't know, if you were just sort of re-watching this as a newer viewer, um, that almost rhymed, or kind of sounded like it did anyway, but um, the point being that, uh, it, the, I guess the reason why it was called day one through five was because it was like in real time, for lack of a better term, which I think really cool, neat idea. Uh, in so much as it was aired one one episode a day, so sort of Monday through Friday. Uh, they're about fifty minutes to an hour long episodes, uh, thereabouts, and yeah, just a five part mini series, I guess. Um, in contrast to series one of season one on or bleh, speaking, series one and two of Torchwood, it's a bit smaller, but I guess it's bigger in scope. Definitely, because um, you've got less core cast, I guess, uh, by this point. Um, there will be spoilers for this series, so if you haven't already watched this series and don't want anything spoiled, probably not the best video to watch this one uh, that I'm filming now. But yeah, I think it's um, it, it's weird watching this, rewatching this show. I don't know if I was old enough to watch it when it came out. 2009 did it come out? Or maybe... Tail End of Tenant, I feel like, is when um, this series came out. And if that's the case, then it is... I would have still been in primary school, if you can believe it, uh, back then. <laughs> so yeah, I, d I definitely don't think I was old enough to watch it. Uh, I maybe rewatched, oh, well, watched it first time midway through being a teenager, so sort of part way through secondary school. Um, I've probably rewatched it maybe, maybe this is the third or fourth time I've rewatched it, but I can't imagine rewatching it more than that because it's, it's quite, I don't even know if intense is the right word, but bleak. It's a very bleak story, it's very, um, yeah, intense. I don't know. I mean, it it definitely has twists and turns, and yeah, it yeah, it's it's well plotted. It's um, very political, obviously. I mean, it's it's very different rewatching this um, after COVID nineteen um, here in the UK because. Let's just say part of this is the polite version of what I want to say about British government that, you know, they handled COVID not very well. <laughs> and that's the polite version of what I want to say. But yeah, as I say, this this sort of... The, the depiction of the politicians in this is just like sort of very close to home, very close to the bone, very real. Um, and that, and it's just funny how people are always banging on about like, yeah, Doctor Who is not political, and blah 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 blah, or the Doctor Who universe and the Doctor Who shows are not political, and it's like, well, this is the most fucking political, um, sort of Doctor Who thing ever, really. I I think, I mean, it's not, it's not hiding its politicalness, um, <laughs> and that, um, but it's got some interesting characters or interesting actors, you know, Pete Capaldi is in this, which is I think his second role in the Doctor Who universe before he becomes Doctor Who of course. Um playing the a very spineless I don't I don't know if spineless is even the right word, but the very sort of uh I d I don't even know how to describe him, but John Frobisher, the very sort of meek I guess, character, um, civil servant, so yeah, he kind of has to be meek, doesn't he? Very different to Malcolm Tucker <laughs> character, um, I assume this was maybe before he got Malcolm Tucker, um, because obviously if this was after or part way through doing Malcolm Tucker, it would be 
Yeah, a bit either a bit too similar a role, and also minus the swearing, you know. So it's just like, oh, okay. Um, John Barrowman obviously plays the lead of Captain Jack. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, he's decent in this, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, he, he has some decent moments. Uh, I like the fact that they kind of acknowledge that they can't kill him, so they're like, well, we can't kill you, so we'll just contain you. And then what they do in that sense is quite clever, I think. There's some decent action. The drama, or the tension is, is good as well. It's very... Um, when they do hammer horror, horror or horror aspects to this to this mini series, it's very sort of quickly shot, you know, and cut like someone's like sort of. It's very scary, scary, probably the best way I can describe it. So I guess your mind kind of cheats when trying to remember this show. In my mind, you know, like there are certain images and bits of the show that have clearly made a bit of an impact on me um, over the years, but remembering what. I actually saw and what I'm filling in as a viewer, the gaps that I'm filling in as a viewer, it's like it blurs that line basically and I think I think Russell's good at knowing that less is more and that really when you think about horror in the traditional sense, I don't mean like Saw and all these rubbish horror movies um, that are just blood and guts, but like traditional hammer horror, it's again it's about what you don't see as much as anything else that's scary, you know, um, and, and therefore psychological and therefore lasts more, it's got more of an imprint on you, um, and that, and so, yeah, I think, I think the 456 as a design, uh, good, creepy, very menacing, Likewise with the name convention, 456, the fact that we don't even know what they're called, technically, you know, that's just the wavelength of a thing, you know, and then they're just like, yeah, just call us that, and it's like, wait, so we don't actually know what they were even called, um, and it's not until, like, the sort of first five or ten minutes, maybe fifteen out of push, minutes of the last episode that we find out why they want the children, and it, the first time I found out, it made me want to throw up in a bin. Uh, so yeah, it was it was very dark. Although, without spoiling it, I guess this is kind of a spoiler if you've read the book Damaged Goods or listened to the audio drama by Big Finish or a novelization adaptation, potentially. Um, it, but they do a similar thing to the bad guys in that, essentially, I think. I could be wrong about that, but... Um, so I guess in that sense this could be, you could argue, very similar to that sort of storyline. Um, or takes inspiration from his earlier work, minus the Doctor, I guess. Although it is kind of cool that like the Doctor gets name dropped in this, because, you know, in the last episode, um, it gets sort of, you know, the, the main, I guess, issue you could fall into with these sort of spin-offs, whether it be Sarah Jane Adventures or Torchwood or this supposed upcoming for the 60th or beyond uh, upcoming unit spin-off. The problem that with these things is like as a viewer, as a Doctor Who fan, you just go, well, where's the Doctor? Why isn't the Doctor doing anything about this? And uh, Gwen, as played by Eve Miles, makes the valid point that, you know, maybe the Doctor knows of these things happening on Earth, but then just thinks, and then just takes a step back, it takes a step back and looks away in shame at what's happening, you know, um, and that, and also I guess on my part as a fan, I've often thought maybe at some point the Doctor has to sort of say, humanity needs to take, I need to let them take the uh, stabilizers off, which is an interesting way of putting it in my mind as a fan because I've just thought, I, I'm pretty sure Capaldi says something like that to Clara and she kind of is like, oh, it's your Earth too, even though you're not a human and blah 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 and all that and it's like, well, yeah, I, I guess, but I can kind of see it from the Doctor's point of view like, how are you going to learn if someone just always swoops in and saves the day sort of thing um, 
and that. But yeah, there's also, uh, for lack of a better term, mm, I don't know if I should say this word, but I, I might get hashtag cancelled for all I know, but mentally ill person, um, you know, or, or Matthew saying the word trauma, uh, a person with trauma, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, in in this series and 2008-9 depiction of someone with mental illness is probably very different to how we would portray someone with mental illness now and so to some people viewing it it might be distasteful it might be well maybe offensive but considering I'm on the spectrum I'm autistic I don't I, don't, I, I didn't find it too uh, uh, egregious or upsetting or anything so uh, but that's just my perspective and my opinion, you know. Um, others may have other opinions which are fine, or just as valid. Um, or other opinions may vary. <laughs> How their concept. Kind of unnerving that I have to say that out loud in a video, but uh, here on YouTube. But um, yeah, I like the fact that it, it sort of starts very sort of Cardiff centric at Torchwood sort of hub. But for one reason or another, kind of moves more to London, which I guess is nice considering that I am aware that obviously in the next series, Miracle Day, unfortunately, Torchwood goes a bit more American y and Americanized, um, for lack of a better term, um, for better or worse. Um, the very controversial Torchwood uh, Miracle Day uh, series. And so this is like, for me in retrospect, like a last hurrah, I feel like, for the Torchwood hub as it were in retrospect you know series one and two are very sort of um predominantly sort of focused around as i say cardiff and and, and the torchwood hub being around wales and that sort of area um whereas this one sort of starts there and then shifts to london and then goes a bit back there sort of kind of uh and that and uh yeah i mean not only are you seeing this show through the eyes of Captain Jack, but also other people who usually get pushed to the back of scenes uh, in an interesting way. They kind of get the limelight, and uh, and that just reminds me I like put the light on now actually. Um, and that so yeah, that's that's quite interesting. Um, you know, I, th I think that was quite interesting. Uh, there's actually quite a few female characters. I'd say there's more female characters thinking about it in this than there are male characters. Or it's it's actually fairly balanced, I think. It's, it's decently balanced. I don't feel like the women get to do more or less. But also, there's just a lot of different stuff you know, subtext, for lack of a better term, you could read into, you know, um, and in that sense, uh, I don't want to say there's a lot of gender politics in this miniseries, but in that sense there is quite a lot of, sort of, a reflection of our real life politics in so much as, you know, we kind of forget that women are there sometimes, um, and especially if you're a politician, clearly. Um, because, yeah, there's a lot of instances where female characters will then be like, well, actually, sir, I'm capable of doing a thing, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think that's kind of funny, uh, personally. Kind of ironic, really. But, um, again, maybe these sorts of things you couldn't get away with now, I don't, I don't know. But uh, I also like the inclusion of UNIT, United Intelligence Task Force. They don't do a lot in this series, unfortunately. Could have been cool if they did a bit more, but yeah. It's just I was thinking the main sort of badass assassin sort of character is female, but then the main character fighting her is female as well with Gwen, you know. Um, it's kind of funny bit where there's one of the female characters that's like, she's a fugitive, and then, oh, if she's a fugitive and she's dangerous, then why did she shoot the tires? And it's like, oh, she's a smart fugitive, you know, it's like, you know, um, and then the car's just like, you know, like, with its tires being bust. But yeah, I think Murray Gold scores the music, uh, or does the music even for this show. 
So it's very orchestrally and dramatic and similar to Doctor Who, really. Um, what else? I think I could be wrong about this, so please feel free to comment below in the comment section if you know. But I think after this, I think Jack's next appearance is in The End of Time, Part 1 and 2, uh, in that bar. Uh, I think I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the timeline there. Like, after this, he goes to that space station for a bit, I think. Um, again, I could be completely wrong about that, talking out my ass. But yeah, um, I almost, I'll be honest, forgot Gwen was pregnant part way through this, which I know is stupid, but yeah, or silly, but yeah. I think the way the 456 are kind of made, design-wise, is kind of like similarly to Macro, I guess. But I do like the fact that they kind of come across like they actually designed like a proper, for lack of a better term, prosthetic or prop sort of thing, you know? Um, and when it's spewing up that green goop, it's the word I used to the person who I was watching this with. I had to say visceral. It's the only way I can describe it. It's visceral. Um, you know, I mean, the first time that happens in the show, there is a person who runs off because they're, like, about to throw up. You know, it's it's that, as I say, sort of visceral. And hopefully maybe even unexpected as well if you've never watched the series. Um, Although, if you're watching this video now, you might know <laughs> that they, you know, spew up this gunk, this green gunk. Uh, the 456, the bad guys. Uh, but yeah, very interesting bad guys. Very, very imposing. It's weird though, because they're not like a... They're shrouded in this gas. And they're not like a an army of, like, Daleks or Cybermen or whatever, but they... A very imposing. It's almost what they don't say that's almost as imposing as what they do say, you know, and the fact that they have so much restraint kind of shows that they have a lot of control, which is probably logically not something we associate with extraterrestrial beings, you know, we assume that they're very either very technological or very primal. There doesn't seem to be any in between there. Whereas these ones seemed quite sort of animalistic in how they moved, but then very sort of calm and collected and intellectual in how they communicated, which is, again, a bit of a contrast there, but also unnerving and unsettling. Um, Nick Briggs pops up here, Nicholas Briggs, uh, the guy who does the Dalek voices, he's one of, he's a, a politician in, in this series, which I thought was funny. If you know, you know, if you don't, it don't, it's not like it's the end of the world that you don't know that, but yeah, um, what else? Uh, decent cliffhangers, I think the third, day three has the best cliffhanger, I think, maybe day one and day three are the, the top two cliffhangers, I think, off the top of my head. Um, yeah, Gwen, Eve Miles, smashes it in this series, she's very, very good, um, yeah, she's a very confident character, or she's very, very much found the role now, or gotten into the role, you know, found her feet in the role, uh, I mean, you'd hope so after doing two other series, I guess, um, of, of Torchwood, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, again, it's it's not a series I, I go back to often, specifically Children of Earth, because it is dark, and the children, all the, weird, it's like, all the child actors are so young, yeah, they just sort of do the things that they need to do in unison, and it's fucking freaky as, you know, it's so simple and yet so effective and so... Unsettling, I guess, is the word I'd use, because again, I think it's the idea that adults like the idea of having control over their lives and over things, and yet, in this instance, in this narrative, in this story, in this fictional universe Ruffalo has created, um, you know, they're not in control because of this alien, because of the children, you know, and it's that sort of idea of what the adults, in inverted commas, do when they don't have control. Well, they kind of act like children and are scared, essentially, you know. Um, 
which is interesting. But yeah, um, I think if you've never watched it, it's worth checking out. I think it's on BBC iPlayer. Um, might be fairly cheap on Amazon Prime or DVD or Blu-ray, but yeah, I think it's worth a watch um, personally, at least once. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's about it from me. Uh, thanks for watching. Please do comment, rate and subscribe to the channel.